This program is brought to you by Emory University. This North Andean textile, dating between 1100 to 1470 AD, is part of the Ancient American Collection at Emory University's Michael C. Carlos Museum. The textile had been preserved in a burial context and is now fragmented, dirty, and stained. The extensive soiling is acidic and therefore damaging to the woven fibers. In order to reduce the dirt and acidity, the textile was bathed in the museum's Parsons Conservation Lab. The textile is an example of double cloth and consists of two distinct layers that are woven simultaneously. There are two independent sets of warps and wefts, in this case blue and white. To create the pattern of llamas and humans, these two textiles pass through one another during weaving to create an interlock textile, with two finished sides or faces with reverse colors. This double weave construction traps dirt and debris between the two faces, making cleaning more difficult. The textile is torn and fragmented. In a previous restoration effort, patches were cut off from the textile itself and were sewn to cover holes. Before cleaning, these inappropriate modern repairs were removed and retained as part of the original object. The textile was then carefully and thoroughly vacuumed to remove loose dirt and dust from the surface. Textiles from this period and region are typically woven from cotton and or camelid fibers. In order to identify the fiber type, we removed tiny samples from the textile and mounted them on glass slides. We used a transmitted light microscope to examine the fiber's morphologies, recognizing the distinct twist that is characteristic of cotton, a plant-derived cellulosic fiber. It is generally safe to wet clean ancient cotton, so we performed solubility tests on the dyes to be certain that they would not run or bleed during bathing in water. To do so, we placed a drop of distilled water in a discrete place on the textile and immediately blotted it with absorbent paper. The act of blotting uses capillary action to draw dirt out of the textile, but the dyes remained and so are insoluble. We repeated the test with warm distilled water and with an aqueous cleaning solution. We decided to bathe one fragment to refine the procedures before cleaning all of the fragments. First, we placed the fragment into a large tub filled with warm distilled water. This step has a dual purpose. It draws out some loose dirt and debris and also wets the textile in preparation for further cleaning. When the textile is wetted, dirt is drawn into the solvent water by diffusion. Warming the water increases the rate of this reaction. Throughout soaking, we gently agitated the bath with our fingertips to encourage complete saturation of the textile and prevent redeposition of the dirt. A discernible amount of dirt came out in the initial water soak. The wet textile was then immersed in a surfactant solution. We used 1-2% to Orvis in distilled water. Orvis is sodium lauryl sulfate, which is commonly found in shampoos and hand soaps. Orvis is an alkaline surfactant, or surface active agent, that reduces the surface tension of water and enables insoluble dirt to be dissolved in water. Orvis and other anionic surfactants are often used for cleaning textiles made of cellulosic fibers such as cotton. Orvis facilitates cleaning by trapping dirt within micelles. These micelles are formed when the hydrophobic tails of the surfactant surround the nonpolar dirt particles. The hydrophilic heads of the surfactant orient toward the water. Thus, the dirt is trapped inside the micelle and can then be washed away. After 20 minutes of gentle agitation, a significant amount of dirt had been removed from the textile as evidenced by the discolored bath. The textile was soaked for 20 minutes because that allows enough time for the dirt to be released but is not long enough for the dirt to begin to redeposit itself into the textile. The textile is then rinsed in four more warm distilled water baths to remove the orvis and any remaining dirt. Each time the tub was drained, the discarded water was less discolored, indicating a successful cleaning. After each change of the bath, we measured the pH of the discarded solution. The pH of the distilled water was neutral. The initial bath was slightly acidic after soaking the textile because acid from the textile was transferred to the water. The Orvis solution was alkaline. After soaking the textile, the cleaning solution was pH neutral because the acidic textile and the alkaline surfactant reached pH equilibrium. This neutral pH remained in subsequent water rinses. After the final rinse, the tub was drained and the textile was allowed to air dry. A piece of cotton muslin was placed on top of the textile as a filter cloth, 
so that any remaining soil would be drawn out via capillary action, preventing the dirt from redepositing onto the textile. When the textile dried, it was visibly cleaner and the colors appeared lighter. This was especially true in the brown and stained areas that are now more true to their original off-white color. Wrinkles and folds were relaxed during cleaning and drying, so the textile now lays more evenly. This successful trial demonstrates the efficacy of the surfactant and the bathing procedure, which can now be used to clean the remaining fragments of this textile prior to display and classroom use. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.